everybody. Welcome back to Board Game Buzz today. My name is Carly. And I'm Kim. And today we're going to be reviewing. Reviewing. I'm going to do like vocal exercises, like news reporter. Okay, I got this. Three, two, one. Hi, friends. Welcome back to Board Game Buzz today. My name is Carly. And I'm Kim. And today we're going to be reviewing the two to four player game Art Society from Mighty Boards Games. In Art Society, you're taking on the role of an art, art, <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. Art connoisseur? Con connoisseur. Con see, connoisseur? Yeah. Connoisseur. Okay, let's try this again. That sounds like a okay. dinosaur. Con connoisseur. <laughs> no, I'm a carna suddenly so it's not questioning. A it's not a connoisseur. <laughs> connoisseur. Connoisseur. How do you spell it? I don't know. C-O-N. I know there's some S's in there. Do um, they have like a little voice thing? Can you tap oh. that? Oh, maybe you're right. Connoisseur. Connoisseur. Wait, do that again. Connoisseur. I was wrong. Connoisseur. I Conno was wrong. Connoisseur? I still can't. Connoisseur. So ignore everything I said before. <laughs> connoisseur. An art connoisseur. See, connoisseur. I'm going to say it wrong. Art connoisseur. An art connoisseur. 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 Like, yeah. sir. Yeah. Like. That was also sir. an mouthful. Art connoisseur. An art connoisseur. Art. Say three times. An art connoisseur. An art, an art connoisseur. connoisseur. An, an art, art connoisseur. connoisseur. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. In art society, you are taking on the role of an art connoisseur, and you are trying your best to get a, the appropriate art pieces that you need to build out your wall to make it the most appealing. Before we share our thoughts on this game, though, we're going to be giving you a really quick overview of how this game plays, and then we'll jump back here and we'll share our thoughts on art society. So this game does play from two to four. We're gonna be kind. Of, I'm gonna kind of be demonstrating based on a two-player game, um, but I'm only gonna keep this one-player board here in the frame because it doesn't really matter too much what the other, um, what your opponent's boards look like. Everybody starts with um, a starting, a starting uh, piece of art that you can place on your board. You will also hand every player um, a, a, the set of auction discs. Um, these are numbered from one to twenty, which will be very important throughout the game, and so we'll talk about these later. So we're gonna kind of quickly go over what a round looks like. Um, so at the beginning of every round, one of the players is going to act as the auctioneer who will actually be selecting the paintings that will be available for auction. So if I was acting as the auctioneer, I would come over here and I would choose, let's say I choose this one, this one, and we'll do this one. Okay, so these are the three that I um, have selected for this round. Now, once the auctioneer has chosen these tiles, now these tiles get flipped over and placed um, based on their value. So for example, this one would be placed here, this one here, and then this piece of art would be placed here. Now, once that has been completed, now we come to the auction um, portion of the game. Um, so if you remember, everybody has these auction tiles. They're numbered one through 20, and everybody will secretly pick a number and then reveal it at the same time. Based on your number, whoever has the highest number, you're actually not bid bidding on pieces of artwork, you're just bidding on turn order. So whoever bid highest could pick one and then it would slowly go down through the rest of the numbers and whoever had the lowest number would go last. Now what makes this auction phase slightly tricky is that once you use a number, that auction disc actually gets removed from the game at that point. So again, you have one through 20, so you wanna kind of be resourceful in regards to what, um, what numbers you are playing um, because once you play it, then you lose it. Now, if you notice, I picked three pieces of artwork, and the reason why I did that is I'm, I'm pretending like we're in a two-player game, um, because you always pick one more piece of artwork than there are players at the table. So if I picked 10, and let's pretend that somebody else around the table picked 19 as their auction, um, they would go ahead and they would select a tile, so they would go ahead and, let's say they select this one, um, and then it would be down to me, and I would have two options, so I'm gonna go ahead and select this, now, when you are placing pieces of artwork onto your wall, there's a couple things you have to be aware of. The first is the, the artwork has to be fully inside this little grid here. It cannot be overhanging at all. Um, it also has to touch at least one other tile alongside a flat edge, so corners would not count. Um, like, for example, that would not count. It has to be touching another previously paste, placed painting on one of the sides. Um, it also has to be oriented the correct way so the artwork is upright. You also 
want to match up similar frames. So there are four frames that are found throughout the game. There are um, silver, a silver frame, there's a wooden frame, this gold frame, which is shown right here, and then also this seashell kind of white frame. When you are able to pair up or match up um, one or more, or I guess two, two or more frames, then you come over here and you get these little bonus pieces of decor that you can hang on your wall that, um, again, they kind of help fill in little empty gaps that might appear throughout the game, but they also give you little bonus points at the end of the game, so those are really nice. So while you want to be matching up frames, you actually don't want to be matching up similar types of artwork. Um, so there are, th there are four different types of artwork found throughout the game. There are, if you can see right here, <laughs> there are yellow artwork, which is like still life, red artwork, which is portraits, blue, which are classified as city life photos, and then green, that is, that is, um, is classified as a landscape photo. You are never at any time allowed to place two of the same types of artwork um, in such a way that they are touching on your board. So now if you take a look at the board, there's one piece of artwork that is left over. Um, that piece of artwork is actually then acquired by the museum. So what that means is that the museum takes um, will take uh, ownership of this piece of art, and then the value of this type of photo will increase. So this is um, a landscape painting, or sorry, a, a cityscape painting, and it is worth five points. So it comes right here, indicating that the museum has a acquired it, and then that type of um, um, painting will now increase by five. Um, so as the game goes on, this little board here um, is al was always kind of fluctuating based on the piece of art that is left over and was unclaimed. After the museum acquires that le final leftover piece of artwork, then um, that, that triggers the end of the round, and then the player who is next um, or on the left of the old auctioneer becomes the new auctioneer, and they begin the next round by selecting um, the paintings for the next auction. As the board goes on, your wall here will fill up more and more with paintings, making it harder and harder to place paintings in the future. So if at any point you acquire a painting that you can't place anywhere on your board, there's a couple things that you can do. The first is you could hand your painting off to your assistant. You can actually do this at any point in the game um, if you ever acquire a painting that you don't want to place at that at that exact moment, you could allow your assistant to hold it for you, um, but just keep in mind that any leftover piece of artwork that is hold that your assistant is holding at the end of the game will be worth negative points for you. So you don't really want to hold on to these too long um, because yeah, they'll be worth negative points. But there's another thing that you can do if you acquire a piece of artwork that is unable to fit on your board at the time of acquiring it. So the other thing that you can do um, is you can actually swap it with um, a painting that is in the museum of the same type. So because this painting does not fit on my wall, I could hypothetically switch it for this smaller one, um, which now fits um, on my board. Um, so that is something that you can do is these paintings that are acquired by the museum are not technically out of the game. You still can use them um, if you need to at a future round. And so obviously that's very general of how rounds work, <laughs> but you'll be um, um, players will take turns taking on the role of the auctioneer, selecting tiles, placing them, and then the auction phase will occur, which then you'll select your painting, adding them to your board, and then whatever is left over will come up here and the museum uh, will increase the value of whatever painting was left over at the end of the round. So that will just keep going and going and going until um, a couple things happen that triggers the end of the game. So the first thing that can happen is if a player, any player has no empty space left on your personal gallery wall. Another thing that can happen is that if a player stores their second excess painting, um, that that can also trigger the end of the game. And also if players have no more um, auction bids left in their hand. Um, so if any of those three things happen, then that triggers the end of the game. Um, we can, we, you finish the round um, or the current round that you are in and then it proceeds to end game scoring. So when you are scoring up at the end of the game, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna come to this, again, museum board and you're going to um, slide the the values of the paintings up to the, their appropriate spots. So in this example, blue was first, so blue gets slid right there. Green came in second, 
yellow came in third and then red came in first. So now players are going to go through and score their paintings on their board based on the value that ended up at the museum. So for this current example, all blues will go through and score and they'll be worth five points each. Greens will be worth four, yellows will be worth three, and then reds will be worth two. You also want to keep in mind that whatever um, type of painting ends up the highest, so in this current example it's blue, whatever blue paintings you have that are hanging or placed in your eyeline level of your board, which is this kind of lighter blue section, those all worth are worth um, double points for you. I believe every um, painting that is overhanging in this eyeline um, is worth an additional three points. Um, so these two um, uh, pieces of artwork right here will be um, an additional three points each because they are in our eyeline. All of your little extra little bonus decor pieces go through and you score um, one point per shield on these. If you have any corners of your board that are revealed, um, those are actually worth negative points for you at the end of the game. So, for example, this would be worth, you know, my um, negative, negative six points for me. Any excess paintings or paintings um, left over that you were unable to place are also worth negative points. Those are worth negative two each. And then if you are able to fully complete your wall, that's actually an additional five points for doing that. So everybody goes through and scores up their points and whoever has the most points wins. All right, so hopefully that overview gives you kind of a general idea of how this game plays, um, but we're going to go ahead and kind of share our thoughts on Art Society. And Jane Beckham is over there just talking away, so you might hear a little bit of him. Yeah. Um, but okay, so in regards to what we liked, Kim, do you want to take it away? Yeah, so first off, I enjoy a good tile lane game. One of the things that I found really interesting with this being a tile lane game is that it's not the pieces, you're not able to just like turn them how you want to fit the board. Um, they're pictures. So thematically, they have to be like in their, their, the way that they're supposed to, when you put them on, when you hang them on the wall, right? So <laughs> you have to hang them the, the correct way they're supposed to be. Yes. Yeah. So um, I like that aspect. And then also just like the whole puzzle of, it adds a layer, I guess, of, a t of the tiling games. And also... I like that there is like a positive matching system and then a negative matching system when it comes to placing the tiles. So you want to match the frames and then the negative is like you don't want the same kind of artwork to be placed next to each other. It just adds like a nice little, I guess, puzzle to the tile placement game in that there are more things that I have to think about than just like, oh, how does this fit nicely in my board? I'm gonna go grab back because... <laughs> Okay, so Beckham's going to join us for a little bit here. <laughs> but um, in regards to something that I liked about the tile placement, I really like how we as the players, we are the ones that are choosing what specific tiles are going to be available for auction for the next round. And I like that because it adds an interesting element in regards to, especially like if you really want to screw over your opponent or try to push the end game a little bit by, you know, getting bigger tiles that won't fit um, on, people's, on, on people's boards. And so they're forced to you know, for the most part, put that in their like overflow or their, their reserve area. I like how we as the players actually get to kind of choose. Um, and it also made it nice because towards the end, if there was a color, like let's pretend you had a lot of red on your board mm -hmm. and the red was really, really low, you could potentially pick big ones just hoping that a red comes out, yeah. hoping that nobody gets it, and then hoping that that will, you know, especially if you choose to bid lower, then you make maybe could leave that red behind hoping to increase the value of that um, so I liked I like just the puzzle of choosing of choosing the tiles from the box there's a, an appropriate amount of like strategy versus randomness yes in my opinion yeah. with the game when it's your turn you can pick uh, which tiles you want what's revealed this kind of random but then you get to pick like what numbers you want when you're bidding and then how that places on the board and then also she was talking about the strategy of leaving it over like so that it can affect this. I really, really love the theme in this game. I love like decorating and I love, I don't know, so something about just like collecting art and hanging it up on your wall and uh -huh. like making it like visually appealing and trying to match your frames. Like I I just loved, loved the theme so much in this game. Um, actually, when I first saw the box art and kind of, and the board, I think that's what I saw the box art and the board and I knew it was about like hanging paintings on a wall. I was like, 
that's an instant buy for me. Yeah. Like I'm instantly, I think I literally went onto their website. I haven't even, I didn't even watch a review. Yeah. I just went on the website and I ordered it. I pre-ordered it because I knew I just needed this in my collection. And it was funny because I talked to my mom too. I was like, mom, I just ordered this board game. It's called Art Society. And she pulled up the picture and she's like, where do I order this? And my mom <laughs> ordered one too. I can definitely relate to like seeing the cover of a board game and be like, oh, I need that I because need that. that's what I did with Fable. And then I got the cover and I was like, oh my goodness. It's like actual pieces of art. Uh -huh. like double layered, like the whole cover. Like it's just, it's, it's beautiful. Like I just, I loved it so much. I also want to take a moment and just, can we just appreciate this insert? <laughs> I love this velvet, this insert, this, uh, oh my goodness, velvet insert. Um, I just loved how efficient it was in regards to you could just, when, when you wanted to play the game, you just open up the box, hand everybody a card, and really you're good to go because mm -hmm. you don't have to go through and sort all these into, you know, individual player trays or everything. I think just the whole production, I think it just worked really, really well for this game. Very little setup. I mean, Very there is more setup. to put away at the end. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> putting, away, putting away the game, that's kind of where the time... But even then, it's not terrible, but it does it does take a little bit. But the thing that matters is getting at the ease of bringing something to the table. Something that I really like, especially in regards to like thinking about this for new gamers, mm -hmm. is I like how forgiving this auction system is. Yes. Because you're not necessarily bidding for a painting, and if you don't get that, then you lose out. You're always going to get something. Mm -hmm. You're really just bidding for turn order. And um, I think I think it's really forgiving because even if you do get like the pretend I got this one that couldn't fit on my board, I could then turn to the museum mm -hmm. and if I could potentially swap this out for something that would fit on my board. So I think it's a very, like I said, I think forgiving is just the best word for it. a forgiving mm -hmm. auction system that I think is really approachable, especially for new gamers or people who might not play a bunch of games. There's not ever necessarily gonna be like super heavy disappointment Yeah. with this game. You might have a little bit like, oh man, like I, I, <laughs> I, I should have bid higher or man, I just wasted a high number when everyone else bid super low. Um, or like, oh no, there's no colors that I need right now. So there, like, there is a little bit of that, but it's not like to the point of like where it feels like catastrophic to your game. It's not, it's not a hard game to teach. It's not a hard game to learn and it's not you, it's not long either. One of my big pros is that the the simplicity level, but with the fun level, is really high for me. So, what do you feel about player count? Like, what? Because I know you've played it. We've I've played mm -hmm. it on at all player counts. Have you played it at all the player counts? I've played two and four. Two and four. Okay. Yeah. So, what what would you prefer? I honestly, I'm not sure. I felt like it played fine at two players. Yeah, I think so too. Um, but I think. Like, part of me wonders, like, I feel like it probably could go up to five, and I maybe almost wish it did go up to five, especially when it comes to bidding games. I like a little bit more of suspense. I don't know how that would affect, like, the tiles and how big the box would need to be to add one more player, but I feel like you could play it at a five player. I was game. actually surprised that this didn't go up to five. I okay. had the same yeah. thought because I feel like most auction games, at least the ones that I like, they they do play great at high yes. player counts because yes. you have that tension. Um, so I do. I I wish that this would go up to five, and maybe mm -hmm. there would be an expansion that would do that. Yeah. Um. And I I think I do prefer it at the higher player counts mm -hmm. just because you have more artwork on the table and kind of more op more options, and there's kind of more tension in regards to the bidding system, um, or the auctions. The, arc, the auction part of the game, but I do think it played fine at two as well. I just don't think there was as much tension. Maybe the only reason it doesn't is because of, because you're picking the tiles. Yeah. And so you have less say in what is going on in the auction. Oh, and then, yeah. And then what would go on in your board, maybe? Yeah, I guess this kind of leads into another thing that I do really like. It, I do like the bidding system in this game a lot. Mm -hmm. Having, is it 1 I to 20 or 2? Yeah, it was one, 1, 1 through 20. 1 through mm -hmm. 20, um, and being able to, like, look at what numbers you have available to you still and, like, try to think about what what is on everyone else's boards and what's available to pick from. And kind of think, okay, do I think Carly is going to want to like bid high this time or is she going <laughs> to pick a low number? So And knowing she, that once you use that, yeah, it's once gone. you use that number, it's gone forever. So yeah. you kind of have that tension too. Mm -hmm. All right. So now we're going to kind of jump into stuff that we didn't like or potentially could see others not liking with this game. Uh, do you want to 
start or do you want me to start? Um, sure, I can, I can okay, start. Okay, take so, it away. So something that I realized in, in my plays of this game is that like, bigger is not always better so like in my mind I'm like I want to fill up my whole board right like I want to get these big pictures down to fill up my board because like in my mind like because of I guess tiling games in general that's like what I'm like I just feel like this need to fill up the whole thing but if you're playing like the bigger ones if that actually isn't necessarily better because it makes it harder for you to, or it makes it so that like you're more likely to run into like same picture problems. Mm -hmm. It's harder to keep them separate from each other when you have like big frames of the of that color on there. And the big frames don't necessarily score you more points. Right? No, they don't. Mm -hmm. They actually like score you. I feel like less points. Well, right? if it will again. The big the big pictures are taking up more space. That yes. potentially you could have like five smaller ones. Yes. Which would give you way more points than one big one. Right. So it it kind of is flip flopped a little bit. Yes. In my brain. Tiny bonus picture you have. That's a, like a victory point at the end of the game. So like, and each type of picture you have is also going to score you points. So having a lot of smaller ones and filling up your board that way, that's going to end up giving you more points. I like the, the idea of the eyeline thematically. Like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, the one where you're like, you don't gonna see, it. see it right in yeah. front of you but I don't know in terms of like I guess for me like the point of it in the game it's so hard to strategize it this yeah. is this part is really random because you have no idea what color is going to be the winning color until like the end of the last couple yes. rounds of the game and you can't really strategize that eyeline idea I like what you said in regards to it's hard to strategize because yeah. for me I think one of my biggest things against this game, I really like this game, mm -hmm. but for me, the second half of the game is way more interesting than the first half of the game. Mm -hmm. Because the second half of the game, that's when it's kind of like getting down to crunch time. You don't, your, bo your, your board isn't as wide open, so you yeah. really have, are looking for specific things. And you, you're kind of more aware of what most likely is going to score lots of points versus yeah. at the beginning... You're like, I could put anything down and yeah. you just, I feel like I don't really have a direction at the yeah. beginning of the game. And I guess like, I'm like a little bit like, I don't feel strongly about the point system in this game either. I'm not sure how I would have done it differently, I guess. I wish that there would have been more ways to score points versus just this. Like I, yes. I really feel like this game needs like secret objectives. Oh yeah. Like yeah, I was just so that. badly. I don't mind this, but I wish there just would have been a secondary way to score points because then you would have like different goals that you're going towards yes. or something else. And that would solve the problem like at the beginning of the game where you're like, I don't know what I'm like, I'm just placing things because yes. I need to. But if you had like a set secret mission that like you need like like I don't yeah know, like three big you know like three big um art pieces or something on your wall and then something else combined with that and then you get like 15 points secretly or something like yeah. then that would have added even more tension because you don't know what other people are going for and the and the particular paintings that you're pulling out you don't know if you're going to be kind of handing them over points yeah or mm -hmm. you know what I mean so I think I think this game really needs something like that yeah or I'm thinking like if you had this like where you're a set of 15 turns potentially and like each yeah. five turns you like did some kind of scoring you like would score happen. up what yeah yeah, yeah that's like true. some kind of mid game scoring I think could be because then it wouldn't come all down to end game then right from the very beginning yeah you could you're you're aware that that scoring is coming up soon so you need to kind of manipulate the market a little mm -hmm. bit and it doesn't just all come down to that end game another thing is sometimes it's kind of hard to judge like the size of the paintings do you have any issues oh yeah with like size <coughs> of paintings i don't know why it was like a hard thing for me sorry no it was for me yeah i don't know why like either because i guess i look at this and for whatever reason i think oh this fits in the eye line but it, it doesn't, doesn't. <laughs> Like, like it just I feel like it hangs over a tad bit more than it should sometimes I think it's because like I look for me I think where my brain goes I'm not looking at the outside I see that there's three notches here and so I think three spaces one two yes, three yeah maybe that's what it is and it has that extra overhang it's like they're always like a half size bigger yes. than I think they're gonna be yes I think the other thing is I do think that this game kind of gets a little samey from game mm -hmm. to game I don't feel like there's 
too like I don't feel like every time I'm like okay I'm gonna do this different or this different mm-hmm. and this different again I think maybe having like secret objectives or variable player powers or something mm-hmm. like that would help a little bit my last little thing is a little bit of a nitpick it would have just been cool if they just could have paid a little homage I think that is that the word I'm yeah, looking for yeah, there you go. to the original art for the <laughs> I'm having an emotional reaction <laughs> <laughs> a little, I'm like, I don't know what, a little homage to the, like, original art for the game because, I mean, I, I'm an artist myself, so I just think that would have been really cool, and then I could have learned more about art and, like, what these different, these little silly pictures, what the actual inspiration was. I think that would have been, I, like, I wish that had been included. That yeah. would have been cool. All right, so let's go ahead and go into our final thoughts. So what did you think about Art Society? What would you, what would you rate it? I am coming in at a solid seven. Um, I I felt like I played it and I was like, this is a seven. Yeah. Like sometimes <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, but I'm like, that that the the rating was a little bit easier for me to just like come to terms with because I I it's a fun game. I enjoyed it. It has bidding, which I like. I like the tiling. Those are aspects of games that I tend to enjoy. In fact, I on my drive here, I was trying to think, is there a bidding game I don't like? Yeah. <laughs> but then the only ones I could think of were Power Grid and Furnace and like trick taking games. Yeah. So I'm like, what other ones are there? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, you have yet to play an yeah. awesome one you don't like. <laughs> I've yet to play one I don't like. Um, and so like, so those are just like overall enjoyable aspects of the game. And like I mentioned in my pros, it's easy to pull out we can play a quick game. And I actually like, in my mind, it's like a same easiness level and simplicity as Wingspan. They're very, very different games. But like <laughs> in my mind, that's where it like falls in, in terms of like the, the weightiness of the game. And we can play it like at seven o'clock before... We have to go to bed at eight, you know? So I like that aspect of it. Um, and, but like, but it's not one that I just like, and makes me excited. Like okay. I don't, I don't feel yeah. excited. And usually it has to make me feel like excited to get to that eight level. So for me personally, I'm coming in a little bit higher. I was kind of between a 7.5 and an eight. Mm-hmm. And I think I'm going to give this one an eight. And the reason why I think that I just love the theme so much in this. And again, maybe it's just because I like love decorating and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but I love the theme. I, I really do enjoy the puzzle. What is kind of pulling it down for me is how... I, I do enjoy the second half more than the first half, personally. Um, I do, you know, there's a little bit of, you know, kind of some nitpicks that I have. I do think that having a little, like, micro expansion yeah. that adds, you know, si- simply, like, personal goals or something that you're trying to achieve that could give you, you know, more points or something. I think that this could become a nine game for me personally. Mm. If there is, you know, little some expansions or stuff that could kind of change it up a little bit, maybe make... I don't know, make the in, make the decisions a little bit more interesting, yeah. especially at the beginning of the game, um, because I really do love this game. I love the artwork on it. I love the theme. It's super easy to pull out and teach people. Um, as far as like a heavy strategic game, this is obviously not it. Yeah. But for like a lighter kind of, you know, intro game, especially intro to like an auction game um, or p- tile placement, I would, I would choose this personally. I really liked this. Um, and I think it does kind of fit... It fits that niche personally in my collection. So that's why I'm giving it an eight. All right, so those were our thoughts on Art Society from Mighty Board Games. How do I end? (laughs) If you liked this video, (laughs) subscribe, like, comment. All the things, all the things to help support us. It would mean so much. If you have played Art Society, please let us know what your thoughts are in the the, um, comments below. We hope you have a great rest of your day and we'll see you next time. Hi. Hi, baby. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. All right. Hey. <laughs> We're not going to review. <laughs> We're just going to play with the baby. We're just going to play with the baby. Yeah. Look at you smiling.